This seminar is for educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice or treatment. Consult with your medical provider for medical advice or treatment. Although the presenters try to keep the information in this seminar as accurate and timely as possible, the speakers and Mather Hospital assume no duty to ensure the seminar is error-free. The speakers and Mather Hospital are not responsible or liable for any claim, loss, or damage resulting from you viewing this seminar. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our, our Healthy You webinar series. Today's topic is a holistic approach to your successful surgery. At any time during the presentation, please feel free to enter any questions you may have using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We will answer as many questions as we can within the time allotted once the presentation concludes. Your questions will always remain anonymous. Today's presenter is Marie O'Brien. She has been a healthcare practitioner for over 30 years and is the current director of the Mather Hospital Northwell Health Integrative Pain Management Program. As a nurse practitioner, practitioner and a clinical expert in the field of pain management, Marie is a published author of peer-reviewed literature that supports the use of non-medication approaches to alleviate suffering and enhance self-efficacy for people, within, with, people with pain. Dr. O'Brien's team are the most recent uh, recipients of the CAT Center for Women's Health Innovation Grant, which is currently funding a program for women affected by cancer. Marie, let me pull up your slides and then I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, thank you. So I'm so happy to be here with all of you to share this information about how to prepare yourself in a holistic minded way um, to achieve a successful surgery and a successful surgical outcome. Uh, next slide, please. These are our objectives for today to explore self-care interventions that can enhance your successful surgery, review simple interventions that you can actually do for yourself so that you feel more prepared for your successful surgery, and to discuss some of the programs that we currently offer here at Mather that um, have been shown to enhance that very successful surgical outcome. And I do need to mention that this presentation is for educational purposes only. Integrative and holistic care is meant to empower self-care as well as to help with the management of different symptoms that may be distressing. None of the interventions that we review or discuss are intended to treat, cure, or prevent disease. Thank you. Next slide. So the integrative care team here at Mather Hospital consists of nurse practitioners and registered nurses who have a focus in health and wellness. And our team provides holistic nursing care and complementary and alternative modalities that are really designed to help the patient or client build their own self-care toolbox. And we're going to discuss today how those things, how that self-care toolbox can actually be used to help you get ready for your surgery. And these are things that are not only important and helpful when you're getting ready for surgery, but they can also help as you recover and these tools are good for many different situations in life. So although our focus today is on how these interventions are helpful for a surgical outcome, many of these interventions are good for day-to-day -day stress, worry, and to enhance overall wellness, which um, I think is important for everyone um, at all points in their life. Thank you. Next slide. So when we think about getting prepared to have success in, a, in our surgery, we typically will have a checklist of things that we need to do. So you're called by pre-surgical testing. They give you a checklist of things to do. Your surgeon gives you a checklist of things to do. And that can seem quite overwhelming, all these things that you need to do to get ready for your surgery. And so I don't mean to burden you or give you one more thing or one more check off to do on your list as you're getting ready for your surgery. But 
truly to be prepared for surgery, it's important to look at all of these components that can enhance your overall level of wellness. And these include things that can help not only your body, which is what we are most often thinking about, but also those other components that make us whole, our mind, our spirit, and then the personal connections that we have with friends, family, and support. Next slide. So when we look at health, combining all of these components together is what truly creates health. And when you're getting ready for surgery, we always want to put our best, our best foot forward anytime we do something, no matter what it is. So whether it's a new job, a new relationship, um, a new endeavor, um, we always want to put our best foot forward and to be fully prepared. So when we think about something as important as an upcoming surgery, um, it makes sense that we want to do everything we can to optimize that success and ensure that we are fully ready. And so many of the things that are done before you have surgery are done in um, collaboration with your healthcare provider, but there are many things that you can actually do yourself that can lead to having improved health, which then will equate to having a better um, surgical outcome and feeling more resilient and recovering faster. Next slide. So first let's talk about our body, right? So your body is having surgery. So we want your body to be as ready as it possibly can. You wanna optimize your body. So just like if you were going to take a long road trip, right? You're going to get in your car and you're going to drive someplace far away for an amazing vacation. Before you do that, I'm sure that you take your car to the mechanic and you make sure that it has an oil change. And you probably clean out your car and make sure that it's vacuumed. You make sure that you have whatever GPS that you're going to need ready. Years ago, we used to make sure that we had a map in the car. I'm sure um, anyone that's close to my age remembers what uh, those maps looked like before we had um, a GPS to tell us which way to go. Um, and you probably stock the car you know, with different things. You're gonna put extra um, washer fluid with your windshield wipers. You're gonna make sure the oil is topped off. You're gonna make sure there's enough gas in the car. Um, you're going to make sure that your tires are in good shape. So all of these things we would be uh, very proactive in doing if we're taking a long road trip to get someplace that we're really excited to go to. So I'd like you to think about your body in a similar way, that as you're getting ready for this experience, this surgical experience, you really want to make sure that your body is in tip-top shape so that this journey can be as successful and uneventful as possible. So as you're getting ready for your surgery, simple things, making sure that you're getting adequate nutrition. When we think about adequate nutrition that's going to help us in getting ready for a surgery, I would like you to consider all of the things that you should be eating as opposed to the things that perhaps you should not be eating. Um, we here at the Integrative Care Program, we always like to think in terms of the positive. So if we focus on what's positive, all the things that we should be doing, all of the things that we want to be doing, then there's very little room left for those things that perhaps are not the best to be doing. So as you're preparing for your successful surgery and you're thinking about your nutrition, it can be helpful if you make yourself a list of the things that you should be eating in the days, weeks, or even months, depending on how much time you have to prepare for your surgery. Think about all those things that you should be eating. Lots and lots of colorful fruits and vegetables, um, lean protein, if you're a, you know, if you eat protein, if you eat meat, if you're a vegetarian, 
uh, thinking about what ways you're going to be able to get adequate protein into your body in a way that resonates with you. Thinking about all the things that you need. And once you come up with a list of all of the things that you need, so at least five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables, green leafy vegetables, unless you're on Coumadin, um, lots and lots of green leafy vegetables, um, a moderate amount of protein, healthy fats, so things like olive oil, avocado, nuts, a nice healthy list of things that you should be eating. And as you go through your day and the days, weeks, and maybe months prior to your surgery, if your focus is on how do I incorporate all of these healthy foods into my diet, then those things that perhaps are not going to be helpful as you're recovering or going in for your surgical experience, things like processed uh, foods, sugar, processed sugar, uh, those types of things, there'll be much less room for. And um, that's a, a very good way to ensure that you're getting the right nutrients. Um, in thinking about nutrition, I do caution any patient that I encounter as you're coming up with a, health, a healthful diet plan, read the labels on the foods that you're eating. Preferably eating things without labels uh, is always the best. So there's not really a label on your apple or your head of lettuce. So we know those things are, are helpful. But things that do carry a label, if you can't read um, or pronounce the ingredient that's on that label, chances are it's not going to contribute to good health. If it's something that you wouldn't naturally reach into your cabinet to pull out um, to maybe uh, cook food for yourself, um, things like natural flavoring. So I'd like you to consider if you were going to make yourself dinner and you opened up your spice cabinet, do you have something labeled natural flavoring? Probably not. Um, but if you read the label and it says cinnamon or ginger or um, salt or pepper, those types of things, you know that's a real food, it's a real spice or seasoning, those things are okay to be in your food. So consider those aspects of creating a healthful diet plan. Uh, making sure that you're hydrated. Hydration is not something that happens in a day or two days. Be, uh, hydrating your body is something that could take several days and is most effective if you do it over a long period of time. Um, I do want to put out there if you have any issues with your kidneys or congestive heart failure, always um, discuss with your primary care provider the amount of fluid that you should be taking if you have any question. Um, however, if you have good working kidneys, your heart is working well, um, you know, making sure that you're drinking water each and every day, choosing water over things like soft drinks, um, alcoholic beverages, um, coffee, those types of things are not going to contribute to your hydration status. So building up that hydration status over time, as opposed to the day or two days before your surgery trying to hydrate, it works best if you take time to mindfully think about um, adding in more water and hydration to your overall plan. Adequate sleep is so important. Sleep allows our brains to clear out the mess, to clear away toxins and um, allows us to process our thoughts and be more clear in our day-to-day -day activities. It is so important to be getting a good restorative sleep. If you find that you're not getting a good restorative sleep for whatever reason that may be, talking to your healthcare provider about ways to enhance your sleep. Um, if you're not sleeping well, have you been screened for things like sleep apnea? 
Mather does have a sleep center, so that's a good resource if you're having challenges with sleeping. And then maybe talking to your healthcare provider about strategies that can help with sleep. Um, things like progressive muscle relaxation or mindfulness can help with the restorative sleep. Um, sleep hygiene is a whole topic in and of itself, but if you're not getting a good restorative sleep, talk to your healthcare practitioner about ways in which you can enhance your restorative sleep. And then movement. You know, often when we encourage people to move, sometimes that's misconstrued to, you know, people might think, oh, I'm supposed to be doing strenuous exercise. But move, motion is lotion and movement is medicine. So making sure that we're getting adequate movement prior to our surgery to the best of our ability so that our bodies are in tip top shape for that upcoming surgery. So if you have the capacity to walk, you should be walking you know, um, um, every day if possible, 30 minutes if you're able to incorporate that into your regimen. Um, and again, consulting with your healthcare providers for how much movement is recommended for your body at that particular time. But we want to make sure that the muscles that have the capacity to be strong and resilient are as strong and resilient as they possibly can be before you come in for your surgery. So anything that you can do to enhance that movement, things like Tai Chi, gentle yoga, walking, all of those things can be extremely beneficial as we try and optimize our body just like you would optimize your car to go on a long trip. We want to optimize all these things so your body is in tip-top shape. Next slide, please. Then we want to think about our mind. You know, our, we cannot disconnect our mind from our body. So everything that happens in our body passes through the mind. Whenever we want to move, our mind needs to contemplate how we're going to move, um, what that movement means to us. So our mind is so important as we're getting ready for anything, as in, for anything, but especially when we're getting ready for surgery. We want to be in the best mindset possible for that successful surgery. Um, doing things like mindfulness practices can be extremely helpful. So interventions like mindful breathing, um, future paced thinking. So considering that right now you may be in one physical way as you're getting ready for your surgery thinking about how much better your life may be after your surgery, what it might look like once you're recovered after you have that surgery, how much more healthy you will be. So putting yourself in that future paced mindset about anticipating good outcomes uh, can be very helpful in preparation for your surgery. Um, gaining any knowledge that you can about the best way to recover from your surgery can help alleviate any stress or worry and, and can help you become more prepared. So we want to make sure that our mind is in the right place uh, because the mind and the body are definitely connected. Next slide. Our spirit. So when we think about spirit, um, it, that means something different to each and every person, whether it's a higher power, whether it's your intended purpose in life, each and every person um, looks at the concept of spirit a little bit differently. So there is no right or wrong way to approach this component of health and well-being. It is whatever resonates with you. And many people find balance in this component through things like meditation, um, journaling. So journaling is highly effective to help us clear away or gain a new perspective about things that are perhaps bothering us. Um, it can help us see where we're at now. And then as you journal through um, an event or, um, 
a challenge in your life, perhaps like an upcoming surgery. As you journal through that event, you, then you have the opportunity to look back at where you were, what you've gone through, and then in the end, where you are now. So journaling is highly effective to give um, perspective and insight and is found to be very helpful by, by many people. And positive affirmations. Um, our mind, body, spirit all respond to the stories and the messages that we send to ourselves. So I suggest to all of my patients and our, our team um, very often recommends or, or prescribes, so to speak, positive affirmations. So telling yourself about how wonderful a, an outcome you are going to have, um, allowing yourself to know that you are um, a positive person, right? So saying positive affirmations, telling yourself positive things, I am calm, I am happy, I am healthy. Repeating these positive messages to yourself uh, can be very effective in, in finding balance and ensuring that your body, mind, and spirit are ready for this new adventure and this new positive outcome of a successful surgery. Next slide. And connections. So as humans, we all need social connection. So as you're getting ready for this surgical experience, making sure that you um, are aware of who your connections are going to be, whether it's a recovery buddy, whether it's a care partner, someone who is there for you as a social support even if it's just someone, if you're at home recovering or perhaps you're staying over in the hospital, even if it's someone that you can pick up the phone and, and give a phone call to to talk to, that can be helpful. And better yet, if you're able to have face-to-face -face time with your family and your friends, your support person, the more that we're able to connect with other people, uh, the better our outcomes actually are because we are as humans, social creatures and connections is having a connection with other people uh, is extremely valuable in helping us recover and in increasing our resilience through any situation. Next slide. So let's talk about your self-care toolbox. Your self-care toolbox is that um, set of skills or tools that are made just for you. These are the things that help you take control. Um, and your toolbox can consist of many different tools. And what works best for each person is going to be different. So no two people will have exactly the same self-care toolbox because we are all so different. Even if we choose to have some of the same interventions in our self-care toolbox, we may apply them in a different way. They may uh, work differently for me than they work for you versus maybe a friend or a neighbor. And as you create a self-care toolbox, um, this is something that works the best if you start preparing before you come into the hospital for your surgery. When people come to the hospital for a surgical experience, there's so many different things that they're learning about and that they're trying to navigate as they move through this experience um, called surgery. So the self-care toolbox is there to help you feel more in control as you navigate this other situation of having a surgery. So although we can share these things with you when, when you come, if you're having a surgery with us here at Mather, these are things that are so valuable and helpful, and they are even more valuable and helpful if you practice them ahead of time. 
so that when you come to the hospital, you know exactly what you're going to use and how you're going to use it. Next slide. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, and this is actually the most simple intervention, we call it purposeful breathing. Purposeful breathing is breathing, as the name implies, with a purpose. And when we breathe in this way, we can actually find ourselves becoming relaxed in just a few moments to minutes. Mindful or purposeful breathing allows our brains to release feel-good chemicals or hormones like endorphins. It stimulates the body to relax. As we take in more oxygen, that oxygen is healing. And the more often that we stop and take a breath, the more often our bodies are receiving that healing and calming oxygen. So there's many different apps available um, to help with mindful breathing. We're going to talk a little bit of, at the end about some of the programs that we have here at Mather that can help you learn some of these techniques. But in, in a nutshell or very concisely, a purposeful or mindful breath would happen as you find a quiet spot, um, especially if you're just starting out or just practicing. Uh, it's helpful if you set aside a few moments a couple of times per day a quiet spot, not too many distractions. And you take a deep breath in through your nose. As you breathe in through your nose, you can notice the oxygen, notice the feel of the air moving through your nose. And as you breathe in, you can feel your diaphragm dropping and your belly expanding just a little bit. And then as you exhale, your belly pulls in ever so slightly, the air comes back up through your lungs and out through your mouth. And that whole process, the more slowly that we do that, more mindfully taking notice of what that feels like, that mindful breath has the power to lower your heart rate, lower your blood pressure, allow you to feel calm and centered. There is a reason that we have that saying, just take a breath. And that is because just taking a breath is so much more than just taking a breath. It is very, very powerful. Uh, next slide. Aromatherapy. So we all have a very prolific aromatherapy program here at Mather. Aromatherapy is the use of essential oils to target specific symptoms, and we use it to promote physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. It can help our patients feel more relaxed, decrease any stress or anxiety they may be feeling, and it can be a wonderful complement to help manage any symptoms that are distressing. Um, I do need to mention that if you are considering using aromatherapy and you have any, uh, be mindful, if you have any allergies to essential oils or specific plants, or if you have any reactive airway disease. So if you inhale scents or different smells and you feel like your lungs get tight or your airway gets tight, then aromatherapy is not for you. But outside of that, um, using um, different essential oils, uh, especially under the guidance of someone who has been educated about the purpose of each different essential oil and any contraindications. It can be a very nice complement to help you manage your any symptoms that you might be having. So it's a really nice tool in that self-care toolbox. And it's very easy to use. Um, a side note about aromatherapy, this works primarily through um, the idea that in your nose, you have a nerve called the olfactory nerve. That nerve is connected to from the outside environment to your brain. That nerve goes right to your limbic system in the brain. So that is where all your memories, your emotions, your feelings all sit in your limbic system. 
So when we use different scents or fragrances, we're able to stimulate that limbic system to help induce a sense of calm, help connect us to memories, just as if you were to walk into someone's house and they were making something that your mom used to make when you were a small child. And as you smell that scent of that food that someone is making, you're immediately transported back to that time of uh, maybe happiness that you had when your mom was making something for you as a child. So uh, aromatherapy can be very powerful in that way. Next slide. Guided imagery is an evidence-based mind-body practice. When we use guided imagery, it allows us to help our mind focus on positive images and thoughts. Guided imagery can help you feel more relaxed. It can lead to a sense of well-being, especially before, during, and after your surgery. And when we feel more relaxed, we sleep better, we're more comfortable, and our healing is improved. Um, we are so fortunate to belong to the Northwell Health System, who actually has a subscription to a guided imagery program for um, successful surgery. So um, after you listen to this webinar, um, you can go to the Northwell Health System uh, Center for Wellness and Integrative Medicine, their website, and on their website, they actually have a download available for guided imagery to help with surgery. It's available to anyone in our community and it is extremely helpful. We advise all of our patients who are coming in for surgery to listen to the surgery specific guided imagery this guided imagery has been curated specifically for the surgical experience. So it encourages people to create a vision or imagine um, their very skillful surgical team to imagine a very successful surgery experience and then imagine in future pace how they are going to be after their surgery. And that very positive outlook, that imagining, that focus on this positive outcome has been demonstrated in numerous um, evidence-based practice studies and research to enhance the surgical outcome. So this is extremely beneficial and we recommend this to so many of our patients um, to the point that we are actually in the process. So if you're having surgery in the next couple of months, uh, we're working on being able to allow patients to actually listen to guided imagery in the operating room as they're going through their surgical experience. So that's in the works right now. Hopefully we'll see that um, come to life within the next um, six to eight weeks. Next slide. Acupuncture is a wonderful intervention. It's been around for thousands of years. Acupuncture has been shown to help reduce stress, anxiety. It can lead to people feeling more calm and relaxed. Acupuncture has demonstrated positive benefits when patients receive acupuncture treatments before as well as after their surgery. And acupuncture is supported by the Joint Commission, the American College of Surgeons, as well as the National Institute of Health to treat many, many, many different symptoms and to enhance health and well being. We are very fortunate here at Mather to have an acupuncturist on staff for our patients who are here in the hospital. And um, this has been so helpful for patients to be able to have access to this intervention um, if they're staying overnight in the hospital, uh, as well as um, we'll talk about some of the other programs that we have here at Mather, if we're able to coordinate an acupuncture treatment for you prior to your surgery. So it's a very helpful intervention and our patients absolutely love receiving acupuncture. Next slide. Reiki is an energy modality. 
uh, that impacts the biofield. So often patients will ask me, can you explain what Reiki is? Because this intervention, although it is becoming much more commonplace and we're seeing this in many, many hospitals and healthcare facilities, um, there's still many people who have never heard of Reiki or they don't understand exactly what it is. So I like to explain to people that Reiki impacts what we call our biofield. And the biofield is actually the energy that radiates from your body. We know that this is true, that we have an energy field that radiates from our body because if we were to put electrodes on your head, we could do that and see your EEG, the brain waves, right? So that's the electrical energy that's flowing through your brain. If we put electrodes on your chest, we could see your EKG, your electrocardiogram. So we could see the energy that's flowing through your heart and we can see the waveform of that electrical energy that's being created by um, the function of the heart. If we put electrodes on your legs, we could see the electrical energy flowing through your nervous system with an EMG. So that actually tells us about the electrical energy that's flowing through your nervous system. We might do that for someone that maybe has a neuropathy and we're trying to identify if there's a challenge with their um, nervous system and with the flow of energy um, through their nervous system. So that energy radiates slightly from the body and that's all measured. Um, and the person who has been educated and trained in providing Reiki utilizes their own biofield to help balance the biofield of the person that they're treating. So Reiki has been extremely beneficial to help people feel calm, relaxed, centered. Um, the number one report that we get from people here in the hospital or in our outpatient clinic when they leave after having a Reiki treatment is that it was profoundly relaxing. So we hear that so often. Uh, so. We actually also did a research study, an uh, IRB approved research study before the COVID pandemic hit on the value of Reiki for patients having a total joint replacement surgery. And we received such great feedback from our patients who participated in that research study that that led to us being able to hire a dedicated nurse to actually offer Reiki to the patients here in the hospital. And so we are able to coordinate re a Reiki treatment for patients here in the hospital. Next slide. So there are many different resources that allow patients to access integrative and holistic care here at Mather. So I just wanna share with you um, several of the programs that we have. Here at Mather, we have the My Surgery Success Program. And to find us, if you're trying to find out how to get involved with the My Surgery Success Program or any of our other programs, you can go straight to the Mather Hospital website. And on the Mather Hospital website, under Care and Treatment, there is um, a link for Integrative Health Care. So you can go right on that Integrative Health Care link and you're gonna click on My Surgery Success. Next slide. And My Surgery Success is actually a program that we offer here at Mather to any patient who is having surgery. If you participate in My Surgery Success, you have the opportunity to schedule a telehealth visit with either myself or another member of the integrative care team and we're able to review not only the tools that we went through today in today's webinar, but also um, have the opportunity to really work on some of those mindfulness-based activities. So to review several different mindful breathing strategies, such as the take five, square breathing, mindful breathing, 
we're able to review things like labyrinth meditation. A labyrinth meditation is a wonderful intervention uh, that is very mindful. Uh, it's a mindful based practice that uh, you can actually do on your own personal labyrinth outside of walking on an actual labyrinth. Um, so we review all of those things. We practice meditation. Um, you learn about um, more in depth into Reiki, acupuncture, hypnosis, which is actually very helpful as well um, to help with recovery for, um, for surgery, to help manage some symptoms. And by participating in my surgery success, that allows you to be more informed and to build your own toolbox, as well as for you to contemplate and consider what types of interventions resonate with you and what you may actually like to participate in um, if you're staying with us overnight. So if you're interested in an acupuncture treatment or receiving Reiki when you're here um, and you participate in the telehealth program, we're actually able to coordinate that for you. And you're able to register for My Surgery Success right on the website. So you can see where that big blue arrow is. You can click on register here. And that will take you to a form that you can use to sign up to participate. We typically offer classes twice a week. So one in the morning and one in the, in the afternoon. In addition, um, in building your self-care toolbox, and in making sure that you are as ready as possible for surgery. For some people, they may be a little bit more challenged or concerned about their ability to be comfortable uh, through their surgery. Uh, for patients who perhaps have a history of chronic pain and they're concerned or worried about an upcoming surgery, you can talk to your surgeon about our transitional pain consult program. The Transitional Pain Consult is an opportunity for you to meet via telehealth with a member of the Integrative Pain Management Program nurse practitioner staff, and we can collaborate with you and your surgical team to review the medications that you currently take to help with your pain and discomfort, explore what can be available to help you during your surgery, as well as how to transition back from whatever discomfort might have been associated with your surgery back to, um, back to your own pain provider or primary care physician that was helping you in the community. Um, in addition to patients who have chronic pain who may benefit from the transitional pain consult, any of our patients or clients who perhaps uh, may be impacted by the disease of addiction and may require medication-assisted therapy, and they're worried about coordinating that medication-assisted therapy with their pain regimen when they're here in the hospital. Again, we can do a transitional pain management consult, and that can help you feel more confident and build your self-care toolbox with the knowledge and understanding that you know your surgery is going to be successful and you are going to be as comfortable as possible because of that care coordination. Communication is key. So making sure that everyone's on the same page and we're all working towards that same goal, which is your successful surgery, we're able to help you get there uh, as quickly as possible. Furthermore, any of our um, women patients, uh, female patients who have been impacted by cancer. So that would be any woman with either active cancer or a cancer survivor. So in the past, uh, we have our RENEW program. RENEW stands for Restore and Empower, um, Restore, Empower and Nurture Women Affected by Cancer. And this is actually our in-person clinic. So every Thursday, we open up um, my office and we open up a group clinic area. And any woman that's been affected by cancer can come here to Mather and actually participate in this program. It's free, funded by a grant. 
and it can really help you feel empowered with hands-on skill so you can receive many of uh, any all of the things that we actually talked about today um, you can experience those treatments in a clinic session and then if you are having surgery for any reason um, those skills transfer beautifully to help support you through that surgical experience. Next slide. So um, the Mather Hospital Integrative Care Program is here to help support any patient who is having surgery to help you feel more comfortable and confident with your surgical experience. And I would love to address any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Marie. If anybody has any questions, you can enter them in the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Marie, are you able to see the questions or would you like me to read them out to you? Okay, let me see if I click on here. Okay, oh, I can see the questions. Very good, thank you. So um, which essential oils do you recommend for aromatherapy? That is a great question. Here in the hospital, we use three essential oils because we have found that they have the least amount of um, side effects or interactions. Um, we use lavender for relaxation. Lavender is a very good all around, all purpose essential oil, which most of our patients love. So it's very good for relaxation to help enhance sleep as well as to help you feel more comfortable uh, because we know that when you feel more calm and relaxed, that then leads to less pain. So lavender is very helpful. Uh, we also use mandarin orange. Mandarin orange is uplifting. Um, it makes us feel good and happy. And whenever we feel more happy and positive, that then translates into feeling more comfortable. So that's very helpful. And we also use peppermint. So peppermint is very good for any queasiness. If you're having an upset stomach, um, many patients have reported that peppermint is extremely helpful with that queasy feeling. Um, I do need to mention that um, you know, prior to using any essential oils, um, as we speak about these, I'm talking about inhalation, meaning that you're inhaling. In the hospital, we use aromatherapy inhalers. So they look like a, a small tube of lipstick. Just looking to see if I had an inhaler with me that would have been helpful, which I don't, but that's okay. It looks like a, a little tube of lipstick and it's personal. So you can actually keep that with you, use it whenever you um, feel like uh, you need some assistance. And as I mentioned before, though, making sure that you don't have any allergies to the essential oil and, um, you know, that you don't have any reactive airway disease. And we need to also say that essential oil should not be given to children, to pets, and we do not recommend them for pregnant women. Um, outside of that, there are many, many um, aromatherapy um, certified aromatherapy um, practitioners. So the American Holistic Aromatherapy Association is a great resource if you're looking for additional information about aromatherapy. Um, our next question, how do we find out which essential oils are best for anxiety? So I think I probably um, answered that again. Lavender is wonderful as long as you don't have any um, allergies to that. And then again, the American Holistic Aromatherapy Association, as well as the American Holistic Nurses Association. Um, those are great resources for aromatherapy. Um, where do we locate the Northwell guided imagery? So that is a great question. So you can access the Northwell guided imagery by going to the internet. On the internet, you can go to Northwell Health and you're going to look for the Center for Wellness and Integrative Medicine. They call it the SHWIM, C-I-W-M. 
And on their website, under their resources, they actually have a link to the guided imagery for surgery success, as well as for um, other purposes. And those are free to the community if you're visiting their website. And if you participate in the My Surgery Success program here at Mather, we send you that link directly. And if you're interested in utilizing the guided imagery while you're here in the hospital, we can give you um, a download to have on your own personal device to, if you participate in the My Surgery Success program so that you have that on your own device and you can listen to it ahead of time. And then depending on the timing of your surgery, we hope that in the next six to eight weeks, we'll be able to facilitate people actually listening to the guided imagery throughout their surgical experience. Do we have any other questions? I think I got the three that were here. You can give it a few seconds to see if anybody has anything else. Okay, awesome. All right, that seems to be it. I just wanted to thank uh, Marie for the lovely presentation and thank you for everybody for joining. Oh, I see a question. We just had one, minute. I'm sorry, we just had one other question. Yep, absolutely. So I am an 86 year old male diabetic awaiting a hip revision and concerned. So uh, for this person, you can absolutely go on, um, you can either call the hospital. So my contact information, if you're, uh, you know, sometimes people are not computer savvy. So if you, you're having trouble navigating the, um, the website to register for My Surgery Success, um, you can call the hospital and the hospital can get you in connection with us. And then we can schedule you for the My Surgery Success program. And then we could help you feel more confident um, and decrease some of those concerns that you have. And so if you were to call the hospital, you can ask the operator directly for me, uh, Marie O'Brien, and um, we'll be able to help you out. And then are there services like Reiki available at home after surgery? That would be wonderful for us to be able to have a team of holistic nurses to be able to deliver these things at home. At the moment, we don't have hands-on um, practitioners to provide holistic care, um, but perhaps that might be something for us to consider in the future, but we do not have that right now. We do have the um, clinic for women affected by cancer, as well as for any woman affected by chronic pain. So we can actually see um, any woman here on Thursdays affected by chronic pain or by cancer um, in the Renew Clinic. Thank you. All right, we'll give it a few more moments again. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. All right, that might be it. Thank you. Um, well, I just wanted to thank you, Marie, for your lovely presentation and thank you everybody for joining today. If you have any questions, you can email them off to Mather Hospital at northwell.edu. And if you'd like to view previous healthy use, you can visit them at www.matherhospital.org forward slash healthy you. Thank you all so much um, and have a great day. Thank you.